Alright guys, uh, today, um, for this week, we're going to be covering 2.6, Characteristics of Quadratic Functions. So we just talked about transformations in 2.5, Transformations of Quadratic Functions. This time we're going to be talking about characteristics. So some of the, the high, something I want to highlight, just some things I want to highlight about the characteristics, is that when you have a quadratic function, the quadratic function is symmetrical, right? so it's a u-shaped and so that means if you draw a line down the middle of it right you're going to have uh, a you can have a reflection uh, of the graph but it doesn't matter because it's a symmetrical graph right so one of the main characteristics that you'll see in quadratic functions first of course is the shape the shape is kinda u-shaped like that which means that it is symmetrical so that's one of the biggest things it's a symmetrical function so since it's symmetrical, there's a, there's a point, there's a line that we call the axis of symmetry. Okay, the axis of symmetry, and that axis is right here. So the axis of symmetry will occur at an x value. Okay, so that's something that's very important. The axis of symmetry will occur at a x value. Okay, because if it's at an x point like right here or right here or right here along the x axis line then you have the line of x equals this or x equals that or x equals this right there okay so it's important to know that the axis of symmetry always occurs on the x axis and so it's at a line x equals okay so here is our function u shaped function here's the line the axis of symmetry and it occurs at this line right here okay so the line at x equals b negative b over 2a so that's given that you have your quadratic function in this format in this sort of a form in standard form this is standard form okay it's not always going to be in standard form you can have factored form as well but this is for standard form so if it's in standard form X, the line of symmetry is at x equals negative b over 2a. So you just use the values here: negative b divided uh, negative b divided by 2a, right there. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so since it's u-shaped, another important characteristic is called the minimum, the minimum or the maximum. Okay. So you're going to have a value, this a, a y value, and um, that that's what the minimum and the maximum is describing. It's describing the smallest possible y or the highest possible y value of your function. So if you have your function facing upward, like we have on this left-hand side, then that means that your a value right here is positive. Remember we talked about last time about having reflections, vertical reflections across the x-axis. So if you're if you have something outside of your squared value that's negative, <coughs> then that means you have a reflection over the x-axis, which means that your that your function is facing downward as opposed to upward. So if a is positive, then you're facing upward. If it's facing upward, then you're going to have a smallest possible y value, which is the minimum. If it's facing downward, then you're going to have a, a largest possible y value, which is your maximum. So remember, like we talked about the axis of symmetry, the axis of symmetry occurs at a line along the x-axis, okay? At x equals something. The minimum or the maximum value isn't a, really a point or a line, it's just a value, okay? and the value is a y value so this is an output value right this is your x value this entire thing is a y value okay and so if <clears throat> if the axis of symmetry is the the point where um, it reflects then that means that your max or your minimum value is going to occur along the x on the x on the axis of symmetry so if you use this value right here x equals negative b over 2a and plug that into your function 
So this is your x value and this is your function, right? If you plug that into your function, then you're going to get the smallest or the highest pass possible y value because that's where your smallest or possible y value will occur. It will occur on the axis of symmetry, okay? <clears throat> so very important to, to realize that. That's a characteristic of it, okay? So those are pretty much the, the important characteristics that I want you to remember. The domain of quadratic functions is always all real numbers, okay? The domain is always all real numbers for quadratic uh, functions. Now the range, <coughs> if you're open up upward, if your graph is open upward like on the left, then your range goes from the smallest possible y value, see, smallest possible y value, the minimum value, so your range is the smallest possible y value and up. So y is greater than that, right? Um, if you have a maximum, then it's uh, and then it's the opposite. If this is your max value, well then your range is everything less than that that y that maximum y value. Okay, and then the last characteristic it talks about is a matter of decreasing versus increasing and that's just like the direction right that your graph is going in so if you're opened upward well you're decreasing going towards the minimum value or the axis of symmetry and then you're increasing afterwards on the other hand if you're open up downward you're increasing upwards towards the maximum or the line of symmetry and then you're decreasing after that point okay Okay, so here are some other properties of the quadratic function. However, this time, this right here, this is in this is a function in a quadratic function in factored form. So if we used, I'm not sure if you guys remember from SM2 how to foil, but if we were to foil this, <laughs> we would actually get a quadratic function in standard form. <laughs> Using both has its benefits, and that's why I, that's what we're going to talk about. So before we get into any of these, I want you guys to understand something very important. The x-axis line right here, let me, let me uh, go about this a different way. So if we have the y-axis line, look at the y-axis line, okay? This is the point, this is the line right here, this is the value 1, right? And this is the value 2 on the y-line, this is the value 3 on the y-axis. This is negative 1, this is negative 2, this is negative 3, right? So that means this line right here is 0, right? That's the value y, uh, that the y is equal to 0. So notice that occurs on the x-axis right here. So y equals 0 occurs on the x-axis line. So to write that out, I'm going to write that out here. So the x-axis is actually equivalent to the line y equals 0. The x-axis is equivalent to the line y equals 0. Okay, and then you can say the same thing. This right here is, say, x equals 1 or x equals 2 or something like that, right? And then this is x equals negative 1, or x equals negative 2, right? So that means right here, this is at the value x equals 0. So the, the x equals 0 line occurs on the y-axis. So the y-axis is actually equivalent to the line x equals 0. Okay? So that is very important because that's how we determine these points right here. These points are x-intercepts and y-intercepts. So if we plug in um, z uh, y equals 0, so if we're plugging in y equals 0 right here, we're going to find x-intercepts, right? So if we plug right here if we make our y value 0 and we solve for x then we're going to find our x intercept and likewise if we plug in x equals 0 
into our function, so plug in x equals 0 here and here into our function, we're going to find y-intercepts because that's where it's going to cross the y-axis, right? So it's important that you guys really understand why, what that means, okay? Alright, so please remember that going forward. It's very, very important. So right here, our first um, item for the properties, it says because f of p is equal to 0 and f of q equals 0, p and q are x-intercepts. So basically what we're saying there, this is the output value, right? This is the output value. This is an output value. So if you, um, so that means this is y, right? So if y equals 0, this is y equals 0 at the point of x equals um, p, and then this is the, the again, a y value so at the point x equals q, so if those are equal to 0, that means they're 0 right here along your x-axis, so they are x-intercepts. So instead of writing f of x, I'm going to put 0, because I want to find out when y is equal to 0, right? Because the x-axis is the line y equals 0. So if I plug 0 into my equation for y, then I'm going to have x minus p, x minus q, which are factors, okay? So that means that we have to set each factor equal to 0. So if you do that, you have x minus p equals 0. So then if you add a p to both sides, then x is equal to p. x minus q equal to 0, add a q to both sides, then x is equal to q. Okay, so those are actually x-intercepts, okay, right here. So it's easier to find um, x-intercepts whenever your quadratic function is in factored form, because all you have to do is set your factors equal to 0, again, because y equals 0 is where you're going to find your x-intercepts. So you set them equal to 0, in order to find your x-intercepts. So keep that in mind, okay? Very important. Okay, so if these are your x-intercepts right here, that means that the halfway distance between these two points, the halfway distance is actually going to give you your line of symmetry right here, okay? So look, if you add the values p and q, because these are x, in, because they're x-intercepts, um, if you add them together and divide by two, you're finding the average distance between the two, right? You're finding the average distance, the halfway point, right? So that is actually the line of symmetry. Okay. So if you ever see something in this form right here, in factored form. If you add the x-intercepts together, divide by 2, you're finding the halfway point, which is also your, your line of symmetry, okay? Your axis of symmetry. Okay. Now, going back to this form right here, f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, okay? First thing I want to go to is the, the y-intercept. So again, the y-intercept occurs along the y-axis, so that means when x is equal to 0. Right here, this is the y-axis, or x equals 0. So if you plug 0 in for your x's values, right here, right here, if you plug zeros into those values right there, then these values are going to go away, right? Because x uh, 0 squared is 0, 0 times by anything is 0. 0 times by b would then be 0, so the only thing you'd be left with is c. Okay? So it's a lot easier in this format to find your y-intercepts, because if you plug 0 for x's, then you're just left with c. This format is a lot easier to find your x-intercepts, 
because you plug 0 in for y and you're left with just your x factors. Okay. All right. Um, and then again, it just talks about the the line of symmetry, which we already the axis of symmetry, which we already talked about, and the vertex right there. So if you're this right here is your axis of symmetry. If it occurs at this line right here, then this is your vertex, right? So this would be your x coordinate. And if you plug that x coordinate into your function like this right here, that's going to be your y value, okay? So then that would be your vertex. So let's go ahead and put this into some practice to make more sense of it all. So right here it says graph the function, label the vertex and the axis of symmetry, find the minimum maximum value, describe the domain and range, and where the function is increasing and decreasing. So first of all, let's graph. So we know how to graph this from transformations, right? We already talked about transformations from 2.5. So transformations, when this says plus 1, we're actually going to go to the negative direction, right? So we're going right there. And we know that this is there's no negative, so it's going to open upward. So our graph should look something like this. Okay. Now, um, so we graphed it. Now it says to label the vertex and the axis of symmetry. So the vertex, right? So that's this point right here. Well, we only went over to the left one. So our vertex is at negative 1, 0. And the axis of symmetry. So the axis of symmetry occurs right here. OK? That's our axis of symmetry. So our axis of symmetry is at the line x equals 1. x equals negative 1. OK? Um, now it says to find the minimum or maximum value. So this opens upward, so that means we're going to have a minimum value, right? And our minimum value, again, is at our vertex, but it, it's the y value of our vertex, and the y value is 0. So our minimum value is 0. Describe the domain and range. The domain is all real numbers because it's a quadratic function and the range um, again so if it's a minimum value it's for all of our values greater than our minimum value so that means our range is y is greater than or equal to zero okay and where it's increasing it's increasing right here after because it opens up uh, our slope right here, it's increasing or it's going upward after to the right of our um, to the right of our our vertex. So I'm just going to say it's increasing for x values greater than zero, and it's decreasing for x values less than zero. And we don't say equal to because at the vertex it's neither increasing or decreasing. Okay, so make sure you don't put x is greater than or equal to or less than or equal to for increasing decreasing because at the vertex our function is doing neither. It's not increasing nor decreasing. Okay, let's go to number two. So y equals negative two x minus four squared minus five. So we know uh, we can follow our transformations, right? So we're going over to positive 4 because it's minus 4 right there. And then we're going to go down negative 5. So this means if it's negative, we're going to the right 4 units. And then if it's minus 5 outside, we're going down 5. So our vertex should be like right there. And we're not going to be open and upward. We're actually going to be open downward. So I'm just going to draw something like that because we don't have any room to draw it. So let's find the vertex. So the vertex happens at, we already found the vertex, it's at 4, negative 5 because we went over 4 units and down 5. 
the axis of symmetry occurs on the x on the x axis line so this is an x equals at the vertex our x value at the vertex is 4 so x equals 4 is our axis of symmetry uh, this is going to have a max value, right? Because it's a uh, it's opened up downward, so our max value, maximum value is our y value at the vertex. So that's negative five. Um, the domain is all real numbers. The range is for y values that are less than or equal to negative 5. We are increasing this we're increasing this way now but then decreasing this way so we're increasing for x values less than 4 and decreasing for x values greater than 4. Okay to the next one Okay, so this is in standard form, right? So, if it's in standard form, it's easier to find the y value, the y intercept, okay? So that means c is going to be our y intercept, and this is the value of c. So, right here is our y intercept. Now, um, to find our vertex, first let's find our axis of symmetry. It might be easier to find that. Vertex and then axis of symmetry. Let's go back up here. So back up here we said the axis of symmetry is right there. X equals negative B over 2A. So negative B divided by 2A. So in this equation, we have negative b is actually negative 3 over 2, and our a value is 3 over 2. So if this is negative and this is negative, that means we're just going to be having a positive. Negative times a negative is positive. So we're going to have 3 on top. And then right here on the denominator, I'm going to cancel out those fractions right there. So then we're just going to be left with 3 on the bottom. So is equal to 1. So x equals 1 is our axis of symmetry. So x equals 1, which would be right here. So if our axis of symmetry is at x equals 1, then our vertex right here we know our x values is going to be 1. This is going to be 1, so now we need to find our y value. So if we already know the x value of our vertex, we just have to plug that into our function to find the y value. So if we plug that into our function, then we do t of 1, which is equal to 3 over 2, and then 1 squared is just 1, so we're just left with 3 over 2, and then minus 3, because 3 times by 1 is 3, and then minus 1. So if we add these fractions together, so t of 1 is equal to 3 over 2. I'm going to rewrite these in fraction form, so that's going to be 6 over 2, because that's 3, minus 2 over 2, because that's 1. So 3 minus 6 minus 2, if we add the num uh, or if we find the if we add the numerators, we get 3 minus 6 minus 2, which should be, um, is that negative 7? I think it might be negative 7. 3 minus 6 is negative 3 minus 2, um, ne negative 5. So we have negative 5 over 2. So that's about negative 2.5, right? So negative 2.5 is our y value. for a vertex. So our vertex is at 1, 1, 2.5, so negative 2.5. So if this is a symmetrical line, then that means we're going to go up this way as well, like that. OK. 
okay so then our minimum value is the y value of our vertex which is negative 2.5 we just found that value right and I'm actually going to erase this right here okay so then we should look something like that so our domain it's all real numbers our range is uh, for y values greater than or equal to negative 2.5 we are increasing uh, this way so we're increasing for values x is greater than 1 and that means we are decreasing the other way for x values less than 1 so we're decreasing this way Sorry, I should write it like this. We're decreasing going this way, and then we'll increase. Okay, so for exercise 4 and 5, graph the function and label the x-intercepts, the vertex, and the y-axis. So these are in factored form, so it would be a lot easier, so it's easy to find our x-intercepts. So if we take x plus 4, which is a factor, x minus 3, which is another factor, if we set them equal to 0, then x is going to equal negative 4, and x is equal to 3. So we're going to have an x-intercept at negative 4, 0, and at 3, 0. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, and 3. Okay? So those are our x-intercepts. Okay? Um, and now the vertex, or let's find the axis of symmetry first. The axis of symmetry occurs halfway between these two. So if we add those two values together, divide by two, we find the halfway point. So if we do negative four plus three divided by two, that's going to be negative one over two. So this is our axis of symmetry. Happens at x equals um, negative one half. So if we do x equals negative one half, so that's going to be right here. And you can see that this is the halfway point. We're going one, two, three and a half. One, two, three and a half. So we found our axis of symmetry, we found our x intercepts, and now um, we want to find the vertex. So we know the vertex happens at um, the vertex. Right now we know the x coordinate is at negative one half. So we just have to plug that into our function to find the y to find the y value. So if we plug so if we have f of negative one over two, that's going to equal four times by negative 1 over 2 plus 8 over 2 I'm going to rewrite that as a fraction times by negative 1 half minus 6 over 2 that's 3 as a fraction so that's equal to 4 so negative 1 plus 8 that's negative 7 so negative 7 over 2 negative 1 minus 6 that's another negative 7 over 2 so we're equal to 4 times by, um, I think that's going to be, uh, sorry, this is positive 7. 8 minus 1 is 7. So we're going to have negative 49 over 2, or over 4, because we're multiplying. So those cancel, so our y value is negative 49. So that's going to be way down there. So way, way, way down there. Okay, but we found our vertex. So we found our vertex, our axis, and our x-intercepts. Okay, for this last one. Okay, so we're going to put this as a factor. We want to find our x-intercepts, so set x equal to 0. And then x minus 6 equal to 0. Well, so we have x equals 0 as 1. And then this is going to be x plus uh, x is equal to 6. So I'm going to do this as 0, this is 2, 
uh, four, five, and six. Okay, that's going to be my scale. So we have an x-intercept at zero, and then an x-intercept at six. So zero, zero, and then six, zero for our x-intercepts. Okay, now to find the, the vertex. So we know that the, well, let's find the axis of symmetry first. So the this distance right here is 6, right? So if we do 6 divided by 2, we can find that that's going to be 3. So our axis of, of symmetry is at x equals 3, which should be right here. So we know our um, our vertex will be along that line and we already have the x intercept or the x value for our our vertex and that's 3 so we have 3 comma something so if we plug 3 into our equation we'll find our y value so f of 3 is equal to negative 7 times by 3 and 3 minus 6 so that's going to be negative 21 3 minus 6 is going to be negative 3 so negative times a negative, so we know this is going to be positive, and 21 times 3 should be 63, okay? So that's going to be way, way, way up there, but I know that's going to look something like that, where our max value will be at 63, because that's where our vertex is, okay? So hopefully these examples helped you, and they'll help you in the homework. Just be sure to make sure you know which form you're in, and how you can use that form in order to find these properties to find these characteristics or to use these properties to find these characteristics so make sure you access this page a lot whenever you're doing your homework and you're reviewing it so that you understand these characteristics and so you don't just have to use the equations but you can use the concepts of all of it, okay? The concepts will be a lot more useful than just going up here and referencing all these equations to find the values, okay? So let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you guys in class.